we're just waiting on one final panelist to arrive, so we'll get started um, very shortly. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to our 2024 Women of Distinction alumni panel. I'm Deidre Davis, the Dean of Student Services, um, and I'm really happy to see you all here today, both faculty and staff, and all of the students as well, so thanks so much for joining. Um, at this time, I'm going to introduce our MC, Grace Jennings. Grace is a junior from New Brunswick, Canada, and she's an international business and logistics major and a member of the women's volleyball team. In three short years here, Grace has left her mark at MMA. She's widely known for her bright personality. <laughs> totally true. Um, and her thoughtful interactions with her peers as well as faculty and staff. Grace loves a good talk and loves to spend time learning about and celebrating others. She knows the value of hard work and dedication and is an ideal representative to share in conversation with our incredible alumni today. So without further ado, welcome Grace. Good evening, everyone. As part of MMA Celebration of Women's History Month, we have invited an amazing group of MMA graduates to be with us today. These women have helped to lay the foundation for what our women students are able to accomplish today in the classroom, on the athletic fields and courts, in the regiment, aboard ships, and ashore. It is great to see so many students, faculty, and staff in the audience. Thank you all so much for being here. Once I have read the bios of our panelists, I will open with a question, and then we'll allow the audience to begin asking questions. Deidre will bring a microphone to you so that everyone can hear your question. You may ask a specific person or ask generally. I do have several questions ready if you're slow to jump in. Following the event, many of our panelists will be joining us for dinner in the Harborview room. We invite you all to join us for more conversation. If you are not on a meal plan, please see Deidre at the close of the event for a meal ticket. And now, without further ado, I introduce to you our panelists. Starting with Rachel Bunker. Rachel earned her Bachelor of Science in International Business and Logistics with a minor in Humanities and Social Sciences in 2020. While at MMA, she was a member of the Women's Volleyball Team and Campus Activities Board. She began her career with Bangor Savings Bank in June of 2020 in their management training program. Upon completion of that program, Rachel became the Assistant Branch Manager at the Bangor Savings Bank in Machias. Most recently, she became the manager of their newest branch in Bar Harbor. She enjoys giving back to her community through coaching volleyball at MDI High School and doing volunteer work. Thank you. 
Jessica Doria. Jess earned, earned her Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology from Maine Maritime Academy in 2021. While attending, she was a member of the women's volleyball team and a three-time NAC champion. Since graduating, she has lived all around the world. Her first move after graduation was to Naples, Florida, working as a sea turtle conservationist at the Rookery Bay National Estuarian Research Reserve. After the end of her first season, she was recruited to play volleyball for Bournemouth University in the United Kingdom while earning her master's in biodiversity conservation. Upon graduation, she moved to Greece, where she worked for the Archipelagos Institute of Marine Conservation, where she was building artificial reefs, monitoring invasive species, and monitoring octopus populations. Since moving back to the States, she is working for MMA as adjunct faculty in the Ocean Studies Department, teaching conservation science, along with being the assistant women's volleyball coach. In the near future, Jess will be starting a new position as lab manager at Florida State University in the Marine Turtle Research ecology and conservation group where she will hopefully settle down and stop moving because it's expensive and she's tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Doucette earned her Bachelor of Science in Marine Transportation Operations from Maine Maritime Academy in 2021. Upon graduation, she joined American Maritime Officers Union and began her career as third mate working on a coastwise crude oil tanker. As a member of AMO, she was also able to gain experience in Murad's Ready Reserve Force Fleet before returning to Castine. She currently works at MMA, serving as third mate on the training ship State of Maine. Megan stays busy spending time with friends, family, and coaching high school basketball. She resides in Orland, Maine with her partner Claire and dog Payson. Andy St. Pierre earned her Bachelor of Science in International Business and Logistics from Maine Maritime Academy in 2014. After graduating, she moved, she moved to Savannah, Georgia to work for International Paper and Procurement. After two years, Andy joined EMD Electronics, part of Merck KGAA in Darbstadt, Germany, where she has worked in procurement and supply chain roles for over seven years. While working full-time, she was able to graduate with her MBA from Georgia Southern University in 2020. She currently leads a team as the Director of Sourcing of North America and Europe for a semiconductor equipment business within her company. She also is an adjunct faculty member for the University of New Hampshire and teaches sustainable sourcing. When Andy isn't working, she enjoys reading and spending time with her husband and rescue cats. <laughs> Ashley Janest earned her Bachelor of Science in International in Business and Logistics from Maine Maritime Academy in 2014. While there, she was named a Skill Scholar Award recipient. After graduation, she began her career at General Dynamics Bath Ironworks as a buyer. After getting married in 2015, she started at Wonderlich Malek Engineering in Winslow, Maine, also as a buyer. She is currently at Wonderlich Malek working as the purchasing manager. Ashley and her husband, Justin, who is also a Maine Maritime alumni, reside in Sydney, Maine with their two daughters, Emma and Ella. Together, they enjoy spending time outside with their two dogs and six, six goats. They stay busy with their daughter's dance and karate schedules and building their business, Janess Welding and Fabrication. <laughs> Nikila Vec is an accomplished professional with a Bachelor of Science in International Business and Logistics. She graduated in 2020 and then started her career journey with Days Jewelers in May 2020. Nikia has made remarkable strides within the organization. Her roles have evolved from marketing coordinator to marketing manager, and now her current position is vice president of marketing. In addition to her corporate achievements, Nikia dedicates her time and expertise as a vice president of Women's Jewelry Association Foundation Board, committed to advancing the organization's mission of empowering women in the jewelry industry. Nikia plays a pivotal role in fostering education, mentorship, and opportunities for women. On a personal note, Nakia married Seamus Meyer in September 2023. Seamus is also a Maine Maritime alumni, and together they reside in Winslow, Maine with her beloved dog, Willa. Nakia cherishes and enjoys quality time with her family. <laughs> Jenna McCourt earned her Bachelor of Science in International Business and Logistics from Maine Maritime Academy in 2012. While attending, she was a member of the women's volleyball team, SIFE president and student body president for two years. She began her career at Shell upon graduation, where she continues to work today. She has held various positions in Shell Chemicals, Shell Trading and Supply, and most recently as a marketing operations manager within the Shell mobility and retail sector. In addition to her professional resume, she has two sons, Wyatt and Waylon. She also will be celebrating her 10-year wedding anniversary this year to fellow MMA alumni Trevor McCourt. 
In her spare time, she enjoys taking the boys on outdoor adventures to include nature hikes and skiing. Thank you again to all of our alumni. You've done so much to pave the way for the students who came after you. I will now open with a question to get us going, and then I'll turn it over to the audience. So my first question is for everybody, and it's what was the most important trait or skill that, brought, that you brought to your workplace that helped you earn the respect of your coworkers? I keep that. Oh, yeah, anyone <laughs> go, yeah. Um, can you guys hear me? Is it, or do I have to hold it? Oh, I can hear you. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think the thing that MMA does is it trains you in all aspects of your potential job. So for me, for Marine Bio, I was trained to not only drive out the boat to the site, I also was trained to scuba dive and collect the samples, and then I was trained to take those samples back into the lab and then analyze them, run the data on it, and then write a paper on it. So it's just an extremely thorough qualification. I can't say it's just one thing. It was just the fact that I had done everything, like at least once, and then they also taught you how to like problem solve through that. Um, so being able to just have that depth of experience is kind of what separates me from a lot of other candidates when I apply for jobs. I'll go. Um, so right now I am working as the, um, the third mate. So I talk to the students a lot about what makes a good um, mate or engineer and you know what you learn here it's comprehensive you're gonna know how to do your job um, the competitive part of it is when you are a good person and interpersonal skills on a ship are I mean y you'll get a job anywhere doing um, doing the right thing being a good person um, being friendly so that's something I brought to my ships and it was um, it was encouraged to you know continue that that um, as I went on so um, that's a huge thing I try to, you know, push forward is, is be good people, understand that I your skills are going to be similar to those from Mass Maritime or, or SUNY, but if you're good people and you can interact with um, people from different places that are different than you, um, you'll go far. So that's what I brought to the ship when I, was, when I would um, get on board, um, and it definitely helped, you know, immensely, so. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so from the IBL perspective, and it's really important, I, I know we have a lot of IBL alumni up here, but it's really important also for the non-IBLs to give their perspective. Um, but from the IBL perspective, I believe that the professionalism that you are taught in class, and I was talking with Elena earlier, and it's still this way, even though it's been 10 years since I've been here, um, but the professionalism that you are taught how to present, how to dress, even though you don't want to dress up in class and walk through the snow, it's very important because that's what differentiates the students from this school from other uh, schools. I had somebody speak in one of my classes recently and they said just show up and do your job and you will beat most everybody else that shows up, which is really hard to comprehend as MMA students because your professors ask a lot of you, but if you just show up and you put a little bit of extra effort in, you will achieve more than you can even imagine. You wanna go? Sure. Um, so a lot of what I did in the management training program that I went through was group project work and presenting back to the different departments that we went through. Um, if you're an IBL, you know, do a lot of group projects, um, as dreaded as those might be sometimes, but just learning teamwork, um, delegation, and leadership in those is so important, and you really have an opportunity to stand out with the skills that you developed here in your professional role in the future if you do all of those things well. Um, so for me, I, I feel like I can. I feel like <laughs> okay. you can't hear it. Um, so for me, I think it was definitely confidence. So being at MMA, it's a very small, tight-knit community. So especially like during my IBL year, there was maybe 10 of us. So you have no choice but to be confident. Um, so being in that small group setting, just being able to say, even in my professional career, if I don't know the answer, I know how I'm going to get to it. So to have that confidence really gained me respect with my peers. 
Um, I went to a male-dominated school. I work in a male-dominated field. So to be able to say, no, I'm, I'm confident that I can get to an answer, um, I think that's been the biggest thing for me that I definitely can attribute that I brought from here. If you haven't noticed, Ashley and I went to school. We were in the same class. If you see us looking at each other, that's probably <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Um, for me, I think I would say communication. So similarly to the other ladies, as far as being close-knit, small community, small classroom, communication, all the group projects, like they said, that they make you do, and the presentation skills that you're taught here, I feel like are invaluable in the workplace, especially as you go through the initial interview process, having that confidence that Ashley mentioned, but, but being able to articulate your point of view is very important, no matter what job and what major you come from. So I think the communication that they teach you here, whether it be in group projects or other aspects of your academics is really important and translates very well into your professional career further um, than your interview, I think. So really good skill to have is honing your communication, whether it's presentations. I know they might be scary at first, but once you do them a few times, you kind of fine tune those skills. So just continue to work on that. Do these work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so for me, it's definitely the work ethic. Um, like everybody else here has said, it's a much smaller school, it's a much smaller community in your classes. So the work that you have to put in has to be quality. And sometimes you have to work a little harder. You know, working in groups, not everybody always participates equally. So sometimes you have to pull the extra weight. Um, but with that, should be no complaining. Um, and that's similar in you know the workplace today. It's um, always doing your best. Um, it might be hard, and sometimes you might not want to work as hard. But um, I always you know have said the harder that I've worked, the luckier I've gotten. So. <laughs> I can keep going. Okay, go ahead. So I have a question for the IBL alumni. How do you approach decision making and risk taking in your business? This wasn't one of the previous questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, from my perspective, in my role, it's constantly changing. So you constantly have to evaluate how risky a decision is based on the projects, based on the people involved, um, how it's going to impact people down the line. And I think it's just relying, a lot of relying on your coworkers to get you the right information. So similar to group projects, right? Everybody's going to participate and do their part. It's similar in the real world is you have to rely a lot on your coworkers to make the decision, whether it's a risky decision, a business decision, if you're going to invest in that project or not. Um, a lot of times it will come down to one decision, but I think you have to um, take the input from a lot of your team members, coworkers across all fields of business. So again, going back to communication, that's key, and then the trust in the people that you work with really helps making those risky decisions a little bit easier. Thanks for taking that one, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I think, you know, too, to point out, different individuals, I think, assess risk differently. So I'm more of a risk taker. So I think being authentic to yourself, that if you are a risk taker, you stay true to that um, and take the risks that you know are, are comfortable. Um, but if you're not a risk taker, I think then don't be unauthentic and make sure that, that it's, it's true to who you are. Um, that's extremely important to find your voice in business, especially as women, you need to find your voice and ensure that you are as authentic as possible. And to that too, um, I think confidence has to have a lot to do with that. Um, you know, in our roles, you're looked at a lot to make decisions, and you're in that position to make those decisions for somebody else and on behalf of your organization. So you, one, yes, have to have um, trust and the knowledge in your coworkers and what you're doing in order to do so, but you also have to be confident um, in order to make those decisions on behalf of your organization. I can go next. Um, Mine might be a little different perspective because a lot of what I do is very black and white. You know, there's a lot of rules and regulations around banking. So, you know, some things are yes and some things are no. Um, but I think 
really just leaning on your peers. Um, you know, I'm never afraid to ask, like, what would you do if you were in this situation? Um, and also, you know, on the other token, a lot of people that I work with have been there for maybe 40 years. So not being afraid to challenge people when they say, well, we've just always done it that way. Um, when you're making decisions around something, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think your gut is, you know, going to be the right answer for you ultimately. Um, so just trusting yourself. You guys all took mine. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so I think, you know, you can look at risk from a business perspective and you can look at it from your, your own personal career perspective. And I remember when I started um, at the company I'm at, um, nine years ago now, and there there was no department that I'm in now. There was somebody, like you said, that had been there forever, things were always done, and I just, I knew I had to speak up, and I knew that there was a better way, and so to not be afraid of what you know and what you've been taught and your skills to say, I, I think we can take this risk and do this. Um, and, and it worked out for me, and I know that that's not always the case, and, and it might not work out, and I think that's another part of it too is, if you take a risk and it doesn't work out, you know, that doesn't mean don't take it next time. All right. If you would just, um, <laughs> first question. Say who you are, what year, and your major, and your education. Hi there, I'm Lydia Lancina. I'm an IBL major in my sophomore year. Um, so my question piggybacks right off of the risk question. Ashley actually almost touched on it. Um, so in decision making and, and like, risky situations have you guys experienced um an instance when you know it doesn't work out you, you made a mistake there's fallout and then how do you handle that solution in the professional field that you work in sure <laughs> so i'll say from from my perspective any risk i've ever taken that didn't pan out or you know you make a mistake i am always the first one to raise my hand and say hey i really messed up um, you know, it's worse to say, okay, how am I going to, you know, cover this up? I'm the very first one and we all make mistakes and, you know, they can be expensive or not. Um, so I am always the very first one. And I think that that, again, gains your rapport with your coworkers to say, you know, we're not, we're all human. We all make mistakes, but I'm, I'm willing to do what I need to do to fix it. So I think that's important to, to own, own the risk you took, whether it works out or it doesn't. Um, I think that's been important for me. Yeah, I would pig piggyback on the piggyback. I would say <laughs> um, definitely owning it is the number one thing to do, and you'll gain a lot of respect, as Ashley said, but then also learning from those mistakes and be willing to say, hey, what did I do wrong and what can I do better next time? So whether it's with a group of people or to your manager that you made the mistake with, just going back to them and saying, hey, how would you have handled this or how would you have liked this to be handled in order to have it have been successful? So definitely use it as a learning opportunity, and that will go a long way as well. One point, too, I think it's important once you've established you've made the error, then you've apologized and you move on from it. So we all make mistakes. Um, I am somebody that will harp on myself more than anybody else will. Maybe some of you are, are like that in this room. We make a mistake in practice. We make a mistake on a test. Just because we do bad one time doesn't mean that we're bad volleyball players, doesn't mean that we're bad soccer players, doesn't mean that we're bad people. Um, so just make sure that you are giving yourself that grace and moving on from that mistake. All right, so what role has mentorship played in your professional journey, and do you have any advice for finding a good mentor? Ooh, Rachel, this is your question. <laughs> <laughs> so when I attended this as a student four years ago, there was somebody from Bangor Savings Bank here um, and I was able to talk to her, and four years later, here I am. Um, but I think, you know, mentorship, your mentor changes as you grow, um, as you, you know, figure out where you want to be. But I, for my mentors, I have to connect with them on a personal level. Um, if you don't click with somebody, you know, that relationship won't do you any service. Um, so I look in a mentor for somebody that I want to be when I grow up. Um, so just really finding that person that 
you um, see yourself in and that you would like to be in the future, I think is really important. I'll go again. Um, so I recently heard the term, give yourself a board of directors. So I heard this on one of my work calls last week and I really liked it, so I'm gonna steal it. And it's basically creating your board of directors directors for your personal life. So you should have somebody that's a mentor, whether they're in your field of business or not. Then you should have somebody that's within your profession that you wanna go into or that you're into. And then you should also have a peer that you can use as a sounding board. And so they were say, the whole premise is if you have those three folks that makes up your board of directors and that kind of helps you guide you in your personal and in your professional career to make decisions um, by bouncing it off of those three people, hopefully you'll get headed in the right direction. So I really like that. So I'm stealing it and giving it to you guys. <laughs> So go reach out to Elena, <laughs> reach out to your coaches, reach out to any of us. Um, I think it's really important to start. And a mentor is somebody that if you have a question, hey, I really did bad on a test and I don't know how to move on from that, that's something that you can come to your mentor about. Mentors really help you with any type of situation. And so that's why it's important, as she said, to make sure that you are comfortable with your mentor. Um, yeah, speaking to that, I, I try to be, um accessible at all times on campus, specifically because I'm the only uh, female officer on the ship right now. Um, it's not always easy to be in you know, that industry or in, in that space um, if you're a female. So I, I reach out to um, all females, engine, deck, wh wherever they, they fall there. Um, and I'm a liaison too. So if they don't feel comfortable going to um, Captain Mac over there, even though he's uh, one of my mentors, um, it's, it's easier to come to the third mate sometimes. And so that too is, is being a mentor is really important. And um, I'm learning a lot about myself through this process too. So um, yes, you should find a mentor, absolutely. But also be a mentor at some point. It might just be you know, a first year when you're a senior. Um, so it's, a, it's an important relationship to have. Um, yeah, in sports, in academics, in you know, professionally, um, reach out generally you're going to get a good response if someone um if you need help okay yeah. thanks everyone for coming it's always so exciting to come to this event it's so <laughs> wonderful to see you all here um how did navigating um such a white and male dominated college that's so invested in a variety of hierarchies help prepare you for what you've done since you've left here. You can define that how you wish. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so when I came here, obviously, as you know, and I'm sure it's similar in ratio, um, and I was in school with my now husband, so I hung out with all of his friends and all the things. Um, left here and I went to a shipyard, so there we go. <laughs> so by the time I got to that shipyard, there wasn't really anything anybody was going to say to me that was going to offend me because um, I'd been here and I'd been around, you know, the ship guys. <laughs> um, so I think just that, like, I don't know, grit maybe is the word for it. Not that, you know, you should be in this, you know, old boys world, I guess, but I, I just felt so, like, I know I can handle this. Um, and even now, I mean, there's three women in my office and there's 50 of us there. So I just feel so confident. And I think even, you know, being, you know, there's three women, women and 50 men, I feel more confident if that's possible. Um, I just, I think that we're, we're just as good. And, and I think that as long as you prove yourself, then there won't be an issue. I think when you don't have a choice but to immerse yourself in these hierarchies and, and these situations, um, I went to uh, UMaine Orono before I came here as a non-traditional student, and it was like going back to the dark ages. Um, it was it was a bizarre world, and it was it, I learned so much from it. And I, like it's empowering to live in these spaces and, and understand that um, you have uh, you know once you get through a couple of years, you have 
um, young men asking you questions and, and, and still empowering. Um, but I, don't, I think it's important to recognize that it is not easy. And, and it is okay that it's not easy. And it's um, for, you're gonna meet a lot of good people. And it, it is, the structure is hard, but it also, um, I think it, yeah, it builds this character that, you know, you might not see in other people that go to different um, colleges. So um, I think really lean into it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not always easy. It's, it's, a, it's a different place, so. All right, I'll follow up on that real quick. Um, keep talking. Uh, men will constantly talk over you. Um, and if you say something five, six, seven times and they're not getting it, another man will say that same exact thing and then he'll, it'll click for him. Um, so keep talking. Your voice is extremely important and you should never let anyone just steamroll over you. Um, keep talking, keep voicing, and sometimes it's extremely tiring. Um, but what you have to say is valid and what you have to say is important and never forget that. I would like, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I think too, um, just like men can learn a lot from women, mm -hmm. maybe more. <laughs> we can learn a lot from them too. Um, so I, I think that's important. There's a lot of life skills that you can learn from, from men or, and women that you can kind of keep in your toolbox. My husband was a merchant marine for 10 years and I was home alone a lot with two little kids and you know I could I could do all the things right you know so so learn that and teach them things and let them teach you things and, and it can work out really well. Now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't need a microphone I got a big mouth. <laughs> There's um Something that needs to be said, I think it was implied, but I, wa I, wanna, I wanna say it, is that you need a mentor, but you can be the mentor. You're young adults, and I know some of the panelists, but I got four rows of people here, and I have talked to some of you to sort through some problems myself. So you don't have to have a mentor, you can be the mentor and look for the opportunity. And that's what you all are doing right now, so thank you. Thank you all so much for being here today. I really very genuinely appreciate your, your time and giving back in this way. Um, I hear Andy trying to make this more conversational. I appreciate that, Andy. Uh, and I really hope that we have an opportunity um, to sit down with you all afterwards. I hope especially the students do because uh, maybe just that personal connection um, would be very helpful here. So a uh, real life application question for something that applies to them right away is we have career fair coming up next week. And um, I'd love to know just some of your thoughts about how career fair was beneficial to you, how uh, some of them might prepare a little bit. Um, they already went to one in the fall. Um, but just any thoughts about that I think would be helpful. Um, also, it means I don't have to go to volleyball practice and make sure that I say what I have never been part of. It'd been much better coming from you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, I'm trying to, if, if you have questions, I mean, it's probably a little scary maybe to ask them. So I'm excited to have dinner with you all and you can ask those questions that maybe we won't say on the live stream. Um, so, but uh, the career fair, I think was how I got my job, to be honest. Um, I worked for International Paper first. I was told to have business cards, so I don't know if anybody has business cards, but um, if you don't have the chance to get business cards now, maybe do that for the next career fair, um, but to hand those out to people that um, might want your information. But show up um, dressed up, right, professional, uh, hand out business cards, or if not, just make sure that people remember who you are. Try to strike up conversation, try to find something in common with that person so they can remember who you are. And if you want to get their card, then follow up with an email afterwards and thank them for their time. So I'll leave some more comments for everybody else. So to follow up um, to that, I actually, um, so my junior year, we all have to do our um, required internship. And um, I found my company that I ended up going to work for, which was Kiwit. Um, so they're a large construction company, Fortune 500. They build a lot of power plants. It's a lot different than what I was used to. I still worked in jewelry before that um, and even to what I'm doing now. But I put myself out there. Um, it was a risk, but I ended up 
taking away so much from that internship. I lived in Kansas for the summer. Um, it wasn't the most comfortable thing I've ever done, um, but it was worthwhile. I gained a lot from it. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is just put yourself out there, talk to people or companies that you may never approach because um, you don't know what you're gonna get from it. Uh, another thing too, I don't know, are, are we still doing um, resume workshops here? Okay, so this is my point. Um, now that I'm in a position to hire, I have seen a wide variety of resumes and I have to say the resumes that come, my resume, the resumes that come out of this place and what I've seen come out of other institutions are not alike. Um, so take advantage of going to that, that workshop. Um, it definitely you know, pans out. People want to look and make sure that your, you know, your resume is polished. It's not six pages long with a selfie and all kinds of different colors. So um, that would be the two biggest takeaways for sure. I think, I, I think too, it's probably important. I'm sure there's a list of companies that are coming. So take a look at that list and, and say, okay, I want to make sure that I hit these and these are important to me. Know if they're hiring, know why they're here um, and do research on that company. Um, I came here when I was with VIW, my previous career, um, with our booth, and somebody walked up and said, so what do you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> so that immediately tells me that you didn't put the time in. You're here to get a free pen and, and walk away. Um, so, so do that research. You don't have to know everything about them, but at least know what the company does. You know, you know look at very quickly. That person could have said, oh, the ship's here, okay. <laughs> so at least do a little bit of research and, and have your, you know, your top five that you want to hit and talk to and have a genuine conversation with. It's an awkward thing. Um, it's an awkward thing for the presenter. How do you talk to somebody you don't, it, it's just, it's weird. So anything you can do to make that not awkward and to connect with that person and make them remember you, especially if they're hiring for an internship, that's the best thing you can do. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's exactly what I was gonna say as far as researching who's actually going to be there. Um, but taking it a step further on the research is find one thing that their company has done within the past six months, whether it's a project, an acquisition, something important to their company and have that be one of your opening lines. Hey, I saw you bought such and such, and such company six months ago. How's that working? Are you involved in that project? Just so they know you actually did your research and they may remember you a little bit more. So it just adds a little bit more color to that conversation. Um, I'm gonna speak from a different perspective. Um, as an ocean studies grad, um, the career fair uh, wasn't necessarily had uh, many resources for ocean science students, and I could be very different now, but this, I'm speaking to the ocean science students. Um, if you find a place you wanna work, like apply all these things, but a lot of the times you're gonna have to be the one reaching out and fighting for these things because it is a little bit more of a competitive field. You can go very different ways and a lot of different things, um, but applying everything that they say, but a lot of the times you're gonna be have to doing the legwork, reaching out to a lot more um, places that might not necessarily be there, so. As far as shipping goes, um, it's more unique. I don't know if anyone, is anyone even in the regiment or going to ship out? Okay, for, I guess for the live stream. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I guess so, I don't know. Um, it's a unique experience, but my best advice is go to career services. Um, talk to the people, the experts about cadet shipping. Um, it, it, it's hard to, you know, process a career for when you don't even, you haven't cadet shipped yet. So um, once you cadet ship and, you know, the first step is talking to these this, this department here, they are unbelievable. So um, go there first and then, you know, cadet shipping will happen, then you'll have a better idea of what's going on. But um, yeah, it's, it, I think every degree program is super different with, yeah. with career fair. Um, I know engineering's um, a lot different too, so. But career fair is, make a good first impression, regardless of what you're doing. Um, good first impressions are, you know, second to none. So if someone remembers you, um, they see so many students. So be someone that sticks out for whatever reason. Um, so that might just be by having good interpersonal skills, but keep practicing that. Even if it, the first time it doesn't work out, um, keep going to booths and trying again, because you can only get better at this, this adult interaction by doing more of it, um, so. And just one more thing. Uh, again, as somebody in a position that can hire, so if there's people coming here to the, the career fair and they went to Maine Maritime, make that connection because 
if I'm hiring and I have a choice between somebody from Maine Maritime and somebody from somewhere else, I play, you know, obviously <laughs> I went to Maine Maritime, um, but truly you stand out as a candidate because you went here. So I myself, I, I work in a small office in Winslow and three people I share walls with of an office all went here. So, you know, use that network and people are coming here because you go to Maine Maritime and because you stand apart. So make that connection. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sarah. Um, I'm an IBL junior. And so my question is, is there anything that you guys regret not doing either while you were at MMA or after you graduated early in your career? Did Deidre plant you? <laughs> I was going to say, I can read it right here. <laughs> that was one of the questions. <laughs> yeah. um, sailing. I wish I would have learned to sail. I mean, why didn't I mm. learn to sail when I was here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same, yep, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, the I, resources are so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're awesome. Yeah. I graduated with just marine biology. I was marine biology SVO, and I was planning on staying another semester, um, but I got a job offer, but I really wish I graduated with that minor in SVO. Um, I still have all the skills, but it sucks that I did all that work and I can't put it on the paper that I have that like skill set. So I have to rely on like getting an interview and then reading down far enough to see the skill set instead of it sticking out right on top that it's marine bio and a minor in SVO. So or the dual major, but whichever one you want. Uh, hi, my name is McKenna Middleton. Um, I'm a senior in the Marine Bio and SVO question, er, department. And so my question is for Megan. Mm. Um, as someone, as because I'm preparing for my co-op this summer, right. and I know that you did cadet shipping yep. for your major as well. So how did you tr prepare for that and transition the knowledge in the classroom to life aboard a ship? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> so I had no idea what I was going into. I mean, it, it's so hard too, because you go into these this, this field is so broad. So maybe yours is a little bit more um, narrow, I'm not sure, but go into it, I mean, figure out what you need, like physically, so what do you pack? You know, get, get that under control first. Um, try to find someone, I mean, the resources here, find someone that, that, was, that did that co-op or was, knows about that company. Um, that's a huge one, that, I did, that was really helpful. Um, and then once you, once you get there, it's gonna be, from my experience, a lot of on-the-job training. And they're they're going to they're not going to say hey you should know everything right now, I mean no one will think that. Um, just as much main maritime is a great resource for companies too, so they want you to work for them when whenever you're done. So they're going to treat you like you know you're still a student and you're doing your co-op. So uh, don't don't get too nervous because generally they're going to treat you um, like a student, and so you're going to learn a ton. But they're not. It's not going to be. I mean, from my experience they'll ease you into it. So go into it confident, but in willing to learn. That is my best advice for you. And positive, be positive, okay? So if you go into it super nervous and, and you know, timid, um, be confident. No, I mean, this is what we say up here. We, that's, that's kind of the, the biggest takeaway from um, this school is that you gain that confidence. You know, you know what you're doing. Um, and it's, it is translatable. You'll find yourself in, in situations that are not, you know, familiar, but, um, yeah, definitely know what to pack though. That's the biggest thing. You gotta, you gotta get that packing list down and, and you should be, that'll take a lot of the anxiety away, I promise. So, um, Thank you. yeah. I didn't have a question. I was just holding onto the mic. So <laughs> anyone else want to? Okay. 
Um, so my question is for Megan, and I just want you all to know that I asked permission from <laughs> Megan before I asked this question, so I don't want anybody to think that I am like outing her. Um, <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> so I, my, my question for Megan is, um, you're obviously, um, because we heard in your bio, um, you're a member of the LGBTQ community, um, and so there may be students in this um, arena here that are um, out, there are may, maybe students that want to be out, and there may be students that are questioning. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess my question for you is, how did you sort of manage that, um, especially here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, coming here, um, I stuck out Obviously, I mean, I, I was called, you know, sir constantly. I still get that um, a lot. So, you know, just the way that I look, first and foremost, walking into a room, it's kind of like that, okay, you know, how am I going to be received? Um, it, it, it was a great community. It, it was great. But it doesn't mean that it's not easy. Um, I mean, it's not hard. It, it's getting on a new ship is difficult. Um, and I think that I, I had a, a lot of reservations about it, so I was nervous about the, the process of going into this world that's male-dominated and generally conservative. Um, and it, it turns out um, there are a lot of people that are looking for an ally, looking for someone to talk to about this. That was probably my biggest point of pride um, at Maine Maritime is how many people felt comfortable, people I didn't know, coming to me and, and just kind of, you know, hey, this is what's going on in my life. Um, how did you handle it when you went through, you know, coming out and, and this whole process? Um, how do you feel, you know, now that you're, it was, it was when I was in my third year, um, I finished in three years, so in my third year it happened a lot with um, younger students, um, male and female, um, and it was really a point of pride for me to feel like I could be that person for, for whoever needed it. And it, the same thing happened in the industry. I had a, my, my first job, um, the chief engineer came up to the bridge and asked if he could talk to me, and he came out um, as trans. I mean, that was not on my bingo card at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on a coastwise tanker for an American company, and the chief engineer came up to me as trans, and essentially I said, you have to be your authentic self. You know, whatever process it is, it's different. It, it's, it's a much different thing than what I went through, but it's, the idea is we're different um, in a world that seems so, you know, male-dominated and white. So. That was a really humbling experience for me, but it, it made me realize that, you know, it wasn't just, you know, a fluke that all these people came to me and, and, and felt comfortable talking to me. We're, it's just, it's everywhere in the industry. Um, people don't change just because they get on a ship or because they come to Maine Maritime Academy. My best advice to anyone here at all, and just as allies, um, even if you're not sorting that out right now, is to recognize when people are, are dealing with this and, and you know, just ask how they're doing. Um, people will come to you um, if you are open and if you're, you're accepting and if you're, um, it, it, there's, there's a certain kind of uh, presence you can have if you're, if you're gonna be an ally and you need to be warm and, and understanding. Um, and if you're willing to do that, if you have the energy to do that, it does get kind of, you know, it gets hard because you know you're dealing with your own stuff. But um, I, I, you could you could change lives. So it was hard for me to go through this and 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 sift through Maine Maritime Academy as someone who's different, um, and then sift through you know the tanker world. Um, but coming back here, it's there's a lot of good things going on here. It, there's a, everyone's different, essentially. Um, you just got to find each other, and and you don't have to be different to to be an ally. So. Um, it's kind of a heavy word, and you don't have to identify as that either. You can just be a good person. So that's kind of, I guess, I don't really know what the question was. It was, <laughs> that, that was that's, the idea is, is, is there a lot, there's a lot more good than you think out there. It was uh, great. It was a great answer. Thank you. I would love yeah. to speak on that as well. Um, so from a professional corporate standpoint, working for Shell Oil, obviously it's a massive company, but I can say in the past 12 years since I've worked there, really all corporations, not only Shell, but all of our partners that we work with as well and across all industries, I would say, have come leaps and bounds in the DEI space, so diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we hold workshops monthly just, again, to make sure that everybody does have an ally and that everybody feels included in the workspace and things of that nature. I was actually, it fits really well, I was speaking this morning on a call to about 500 people within Shell on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and our topic this month was mental health awareness. So 
it includes, um, it's an umbrella term, but it includes definitely all of those facets that fall under it. So I'd just say from a corporate standpoint, I think all of those industries are really trying hard to be inclusive in this day and age as well. Yeah, and, and part of that too, the companies are doing a great job, um, from what I can tell, the Maritime's doing a great job too. Um, but in, in the trainings, we, we talked about this too, um, part of the Culture of Respect Committee, and the trainings can get a little bit monotonous. So it's kind of like those those small conversations you have um, with folks in you know in the dining hall or on a ship. It, that's those, those those spaces are super important, and that kind of translates to a shift in culture, and then that translates to what we see now in in you know large industry. Um, but yeah, it's if if you ever feel like you're alone, I promise you're not. Absolutely not. I was um, again, I was apprehensive, but I I, I found a lot of positive aspects to the shipping industry and to Maine Maritime Academy. So, um, yeah. Thank you. I'm just gonna throw it. <laughs> so my question is sort of the other side, because we know you all loved Maine Maritime and we all know and hope that they all love Maine Maritime. Um, but I'd like you all to speak to perhaps somewhere where you felt Maine Maritime didn't prepare you and maybe specifically give us a story and then where maybe you had a mentor who helped you on that path or how you found the answer yourself. I don't think that any school or any university will prepare you fully for your first job. Or well, how many of you are about to start your first job or first internship? Only two of you. Okay. <laughs> so, a few more years keep returning to this panel. Then. But um, I, I don't think any university will prepare you for for your first job. Uh, Maine Maritime didn't give me every skill that I needed to, to, I work in procurement. We didn't even have a procurement class when I was here. Um, so good on me, Maritime, to recognize that gap and, and fill it. So I, I think don't be afraid if you feel like you don't know yet what you need to do in your job because I didn't know what I needed to do in my job. I just, again, confidence, authenticity, just very transparent about, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the idea. And can you embellish on some of those a little bit? Like maybe it, it uh, that's a great are you story. Are me in trouble, Terry? What are you trying to do? Here? <laughs> but uh, not necessarily you. But maybe the same thing. Like obviously, no institution can prepare you for everything. But maybe it's a story that uh, I wish that they could, and maybe them as students could inspire that change. Even I think, um, and just coming from a perspective where we, we train to to be navigators and to be engineers um, and even the sciences too I think you all get a really impressive um, dose of doing this this is new for me I never thought I'd be doing this at all I thought I'd be at a tanker somewhere else but here I am doing this but I'm learning a lot from from this group so implementing I had decent interpersonal skills that like I talked about before um, going into the industry because I was older but I, I see a lot of that lacking in, in the younger third mates or, or engineers that I meet on ships um, from Maine Maritime. And I think that it's really important to recognize that just because we're all on ships, we still talk to each other. We live in this you know, weird apartment building together and you know, go to work every day together. It's, it's, it's bizarre. But those interpersonal skills and learning how to interact with others, I, I just, you know, seeing the way that IBL works and how professional and, and I don't know, eloquent you all are. It's, I think that'd be really important. Yeah, there you go. It'd be important to, to do that, to do more of that with um, the regimental portion of it is, hey, how do you go into this situation? How are you, how do you, you know, yeah, it, interpersonal skills. For, yeah, that'd be great. I'm hopping off that. Um, you guys, uh, all the IBL people are very polished. I'm not as <laughs> polished um, and speak very well. Uh, I did like a few presentations um, and I didn't have that training. And I wish I was maybe pushed to take an IBL class. Um, and because sometimes when I get up and I talk, I'm just like talking conversationally. And I think that's something I learned f after graduating to now how to like, mm, 
take the edge off of bring your personality, but maybe don't bring a hundred percent of it all like out the gate. Um, I didn't have that training, so I had to learn very quickly. I was like, oh, maybe they don't want to hear that right now. Um, but I think that's just because I didn't have that um, training that most of the people up here do have. So it's a good point. I like it. Um, <laughs> so for me, I would say specifically coming from the IBL major, um, it's heavily weighted towards supply chain logistics, obviously, and not so much the business portion is what I found. Obviously, it's been a hot minute since I've been in classes, so those could have changed, um, but I was really interested in the marketing piece. And so I remember there was just a small section of classes that were really geared towards marketing. And I remember going to our, our professor at the time, Potiker, and saying, hey, this is something that I'm really interested in. Could we have a one-on-one -on -one chat about it? So if there is something within your major that you're interested in and they just touch on it briefly or it's just one assignment, really go back to them and ask and do a deep dive into that because there's a lot of skills that can be learned and ultimately it's your career at the end of the day. So I know you have tests and quizzes, but you really are here to get that knowledge from those topics. So if there's something that interests you, go back to the professor and challenge them to teach you more on a certain topic. And so I think that's where um, the IBL major for me lacked was that business portion and trying to fill those gaps myself. Um, so I would just challenge you all, if there is something that you're interested in, to go back and ask those questions. Hello. <laughs> so my experience is also in MMA alumni shipping, um, and so a lot of environments where my observation, both as a professor and as a professional, is that women tend to diminish themselves. And one of the pieces of advice that I've tried to give my advisees or the students that I've had in my own um, classroom or when I'm able to do a little bit of mentoring is to try to find a way to um, not default to that sort of bringing yourself down when there's other people in the room. What piece of advice or how did you see yourselves um, getting to the point where you were no longer diminishing yourselves to make other people feel good about themselves around you? Um, I actually, Trisha Carver is getting credit for this. Um, and when I first started coming in and working for her, I apologized for everything and she was like, stop doing that. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to say sorry after every sentence. And I took that to heart and um, you don't need to apologize for everything. And I think um, some of the things that have just helped me are like reminding yourself of everything you've already done. You guys, like, you're still at MMA, but look back at the stuff you've already done. Like, the work you've done is already impressive. And um, just because you're doing something new doesn't mean like you're not qualified for it or you're not ready for it or you can't do it. Like, you've already done it. It's just it maybe in different pieces and in different areas. and. Um, you just have to put it together differently for this new thing that you're doing. Um, and if you haven't done it, you know how to figure it out. Like, just remind yourself of how far you've already come. Like, if you just take a second look back, you're like, I'm pretty cool. Like, that's what's going to happen. Um, I also wake up every day and I listen to a Meg Thee Stallion song, and I think that everyone should take that. That's my, <laughs> I learned that from Brianna Mays, and it helps me. So, I think also surrounding yourself with women that raise you up and speak highly of you in a room is um, very impactful. So I loved your bio. Um, her bio, I could tell it was very authentic and she did not diminish herself and I love that. And I, it's important because it reminded me, hey, I need to also do that as well. So it's a very good question and I think we need as women to hold each other accountable for that and just say, you know, why did you diminish yourself? You are awesome, you're amazing and make sure that you have a group of women that will do that for you because that's very important. As you get older, it's very hard to make friends, unfortunately, so you need to keep that <laughs> core and keep those cheerleaders for you when you're feeling down. I think it's increasingly hard too with social media the way it is today. Um, you know, I find myself as a professional, as a wife and as a mother, constantly, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I could be a better mother or I could be a better employee, but that's someone's highlight reel, right? I mean, we're not posting, I try not to <laughs> post the bad stuff on Facebook or Instagram or whatever your social media is. So I think just not comparing yourself to other people's highlight reel is a good way to, to not say, okay, well, I'm not good enough or I'm not as good. 
you are, you're seeing someone's very carefully curated, you know, the good parts of their life. So you don't see what's behind the scenes at their job or in their marriage or, or as, you know, as a parent um, in any aspect of your life, whatever that may be. So social media is like hard. Just be careful. And that's not real life. Um, speaking to the sorry p topic, it's that's something I like push very hard when I work on a anywhere um, with a female on a ship um, during cadet shipping. I mean, anything you come across these women that don't belong, don't belong in these spaces that, you know, you're one of two on board or whatever it is. I worked with um, an alumni from here who is insanely successful and brilliant. And she had, I mean, just blew me out of the water as far as, you know, mates go. Um, she just was just really good at her job. And, but she always said sorry after she I mean, did nothing wrong. And I said, you know, got to stop that. It's, when's the last time you heard any man on the ship say sorry? She was like, oh, yeah. Like, n never. Literally never. Um, so that's the thing, too. Remind yourself, no, no one, none of these, these men you're working with um, in these spaces are, are saying sorry. They're, they're not diminishing themselves. In fact, they are, are hyping themselves up um, to more than they are, generally. And, and, it's, and it's just the nature of this. It's a culture. It's, I'm not saying they're bad people, but it's just the culture. So um, let's, let's kind of break that habit of, of apologizing for existing in a space or, or when you're doing nothing wrong. Um, and I'll, I always just remind myself, when was the last time I heard a man say sorry on the ship? It's just, it, it, it's, it's a good reminder. Um, like, but own your mistakes, you know, and move on. But don't apologize for, you know, existing in a space. That's, that's a great point. I think in our particular class of IBL, the girls kind of ran the show. Um, and I think our professors would agree with that. Um, but we just owned it always. Um, and we were not afraid to, you know, yeah, get things rolling, take charge. Um, we knew we were good and <laughs> we kind of ran with that and we were not going to apologize for that um, at all. So I think just own it if you know you're good at something absolutely take advantage of that and never apologize for being that person. And one other thing with that, I think um, like the self-diminishment and apologizing for your mistakes or something that you say that you think might be out of place, a lot of it is a mindset. Um, and I've noticed the more that you're able to celebrate other people, in turn, more people are gonna celebrate you and that's gonna help your, your self-confidence. So um, celebrate the small wins, celebrate the big wins. And don't get down on yourself when you see somebody getting their dream job or um, you know, getting that promotion that you really wanted because one day it will be your turn. It's just not yet. Just one more thing off that. Um, your life is your own and you shouldn't be comparing it to anybody else's journey. Like just because this one person is getting married or has this promotion, it's just not your time yet. And it's not meant for you. And that is a hundred percent okay. It that's their journey. That's their life. You cannot internalize that. You have to let that stay over there. And as I'm saying this, I should probably take that advice. So <laughs> um so I have another question. Um I've worked the past three years at like a lumber brokerage and the I don't get me wrong, I love it, but the only time there is a female in sales is when I'm home in the summer doing my internship. Um, I find the men super supportive, but when I go visit like mail yards, I do find sometimes things are explained to me more broken down or I'm excluded from a conversation. At what point should you like stand up and say something versus use their rudeness to your advantage and have it come back later? Like at what point do you correct them in the moment or just keep it in the back of your head. I, I think um, maybe not in that particular moment, but any opportunity that you can improve yourself, and, and it's unfortunate that we or anybody has to prove themselves, but if you can say, you know, no, I look, I do know these things, or any, any time that you can kind of interject and, and, you know, put a feather in your cap and say, these are the things that I know. Um, and I kind of do that in my professional career. It's funny working with men. I, I joke that, you know, a lot of it is they're a, a bit more dramatic than women sometimes. And, you know, you hear them complaining and fighting and all this stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it, it's hard. So 
in in that aspect, I can kind of say, look, here's what you do. <laughs> this is how you're going to deal with this, this, and this. And if you can help solve a problem, then that gives you the the rapport and the respect to say, okay, no, she does know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I would just add on that and say, be cautious of the situation. Make sure that they are like, are they trying to be ignorant or they just don't realize that they're doing it right? Because um, a lot of these industries are male dominated and so they have been around for a while. So there is a lot to be learned from the men in these various industries as well. Um, but I would say always be confident in yourself. And at the end of the day, competency, knowing your stuff, adding value to the conversation, to the project, to whatever it is will always take over and they'll always listen to you at the end of the day. So making sure that you know your stuff and you're able to speak well to it, they'll automatically pay attention. I think that if you approach it gently, and I think not making the assumption that they're, they're doing it intentionally or um, it's, you know, these industries are male dominated. There's no way around that. You might be, you know, an anomaly in this, you know, I don't know where, what that you do, but it might, it might be that they're not used to it. And they might, you know, they might be, you know, unaware that they're doing that. So um, approach it. I think you should, you know, stand up for yourself. Um, I've had to do that on ships where, you know, they're sending a cadet to do my job, and you know, I just, you know, I stopped. I said, no, you got to send me. I'm the, I'm the officer. That is, that is not an officer. So, but they're a male. So they didn't recognize they were doing that. So that's part of it too is, and, and these are my friends. These are not bad people, but it's that they don't even know they're doing it. It, it could be the case. Um, they're not aware of it. So, you know, approach it gently, but definitely stand up for yourself. I mean, I, if, you, if you feel that you're not, this is, again, your journey too. This is, this is your career. Get the most out of it, okay? Step into those conversations if, they're, if you're trying to squeeze you out, okay? Um, engage, but it's, I, I'd say, if you if you feel that you're being disrespected, say something. Yeah. I think it's important to notice that we are saying similar things, but everybody is kind of giving a different perspective. Um, this is a really good question because this is something I have to work on in the workplace. I'm very, if somebody is talking to me and it sounds like they don't think I know what I'm talking about, I get really upset about that. It really bothers me. I feel like I've always had this chip on my shoulder to prove, you know, I can be just as strong as a male. I can be just as smart. I can do all of this. So that's also okay if you feel like you're frustrated. But to their point, you're in the workplace. You have to make sure that you are being professional. But at the same time, right, we have to do this, but also not too much. Isn't that what they always say about women? But mm -hmm. I think it's important that you, again, I'm going to say be authentic. And I do sometimes say to them, I don't like how you're talking to me, or you have to give sometimes some credit and some grace and say, did you mean, maybe phrase it that way, did you mean to ask me about my job and are you trying to understand if I know how to do this? Or ask it in a way that it doesn't make you look like you're reactive, but it's, it's making sure that they understand that, oh, did I just explain what her job was to her? Ooh, you know, frame it in that way, but still be true to yourself. Um, and one other point to that too, um, you know, besides being a woman, a woman, um, I think the other huge aspect or setback, I guess you could say, that we have um, is age. You know, in a lot, you know, I know my um, my company that I work for, the industry that I'm in. There's a lot of, um, I guess you could say, powerful people that have been around for a very long time. You're in a room with them; they're all conversing with each other. Um, it's like, how do I make my mark or how do I get them to respect me? Um, so again, to that point, it's all about being confident in what you bring to the table. And one thing that I've noticed um, in my career and my role is that different perspectives um, are the key to success. So making other people who might not want to see that perspective, see that different perspective and how we can work together um, is a huge advantage. I have another question, if no one else does. <laughs> um, so what was, do you think, was the biggest mistake you made, and then what helped you to identify it, and then what helped you get over it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I actually did two internships. I lied. My first one was my sophomore year um, for QIT, which was just optional, and I did that. My second year, um, a junior, was your co-op, which was required. 
I'm like, I'm going to Maine Maritime. I've always been, you know, in the jewelry industry. I got to do something different. So I actually went to work for BIW, and it was not a good experience for me. It was, uh, I called Elena crying, <laughs> and um, like, what do I do? Like, I'm stuck. Um, and I got, I put myself in that situation because I was being inauthentic to myself. Um, I should have known from the start that that was not the place for me. Um, so I think, you know, we're all going to make mistakes. You're going to find roles or positions that aren't made for you, but don't, don't live in that bubble. I was in that bubble for a week. It was miserable. But after that, I found something else and it was amazing and it led me to where I am today. So, um, don't be afraid to say no and change course. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm the only one talking here. Um, there, there's a lot to be said about, um, I think we brought it up too, is that don't just accept things the way that they are because it's always been that way. Um, and and it, it works differently in different industries and there's always a safety component to everything. But my, my, what I wish I had done was when I was on tankers was speak up when I saw something unsafe. It, in small scale, yes, I did that every, every single time. But large scale, looking at the big picture of the company I was working for, there's a lot of unsafe practices. Um, and it was, it was kind of, it was a cultural issue. And, and I think that if you see these things, you know, unraveling or, or, or going on, say something. So I wish, and it's, it's definitely, there's a shift in the industry um, due to a lot of things that have gone on in, um, in regards to safety. But yeah, I would just speak up. So it, it, small scale, yes, but large scale too. Look at a big picture. Um, you're capable of, of assessing things. So um, if you do see something that is, doesn't seem right in, in, or is ineffective or um, an inefficient, whatever it might be, because I know, you know business is, is much different, speak up, say something, um, because that's, I think we've probably all you know, let things go and um, wish we said something. So. We have time for about one more question. So do we have an audience member or are we going to go back to Grace? <laughs> um, my name is Katie Albritton. I am a junior marine bio SVO major here. Um, I guess we're going to close it out with probably the most basic question we possibly can. Um, if you could give yourself a piece of advice thinking about, about the time that you spent here, what would you say to yourself? So many things. Um, but I think my biggest piece of advice would be like, just do it, Nike, whatever. Uh, but you have so many opportunities in front of you, you have no idea. Like you can go any way you want to go right now. And I still feel that way now. But like really when I was graduating, you could do a million different things. You can apply to every job, go to the office hours, ask the questions, like just do the things that you are like, maybe like, eh, like, oh, that application's due. Like I, I'll just throw something together. Like, no, put the effort in, do it. Like just take advantage of every single opportunity. Take the sailing class. Um, Take that extra class to get the minor so you can put it on your resume. Um, you have so many things in front of you right now, and like, you only have so many hands and so much room to carry it. But do as much as you can. Like, don't doubt yourself. Be confident. You can apply for that job. You're like, oh, maybe not. No, apply for that job. Like, yeah. Okay, I'm done. Um, I would say keep the contacts that you meet here. So not only your peers, but the folks that you may meet next week or this week, whenever the career fair is, they're going to be handing out a lot of business cards. You may have an interview with folks. You may not get the role, but you still have their business cards. So keep all of those contacts. You may need to pull those at a later date, whether it's in a couple years, 10 years, just try to stay up with those. Um, I got hundreds and hundreds of business cards over my time here and through my internships and now they're in a box somewhere and I have not kept up with those contacts. So I would say just make sure whether it's just an email once a year like hey it was great ch chatting with you at the career fair just wanted to remind you this is who I am. So just put in the effort there because you never know when you might need to pull on those. Um, surround yourself with good people because from the, uh, from the other side of this um, seeing the students that um, 
have potential to be really good at this, but are with the wrong group. Um, they're not going to, you know, reach their their potential. I don't hear if they're surrounded by those people. So surround yourself with good people because we notice that. We notice who you're around and, and, and what's going on and how you act and your level of respect. Um, so that translates into the next level. So those the people that you know are, are running in the in the the circles that are respectful and they care about academics and and community and everything. Those are the people that are getting jobs. Um, so that's my don't do the cool thing, um, I, I guess, is always. But um, so yeah, stay with good people because that's how you get jobs. Um, and in 10 years, someone will remember, you know, oh, that was, a, they were, they were uh, friends with so-and-so who is now working for this company. It's, it's networking, but it's also um, part of kind of like, yeah, a fruitful life. So um, surround yourself with a good people and keep your circle small. That's actually a good point to you. <laughs> I think when I was here, I didn't enjoy it like I should have. I think it was very easy to say, you know, you're in casting, there's nothing to do. You get stuck in this world, um, but then you leave and it's like, wow, no, that really was like, not to be, <laughs> you know, cliche, but that was like the best four years of my life. Um, I'm still like really proud and like anybody that will listen I tell them like no I went to Maine Maritime and so did my husband and these are our diplomas on our wall in our <laughs> living room um so I I think you know it's so hard to see it when you're in the moment but like y you are at such an awesome place and you're being given so many opportunities and like it's been 10 years since I've been here and I like pulled onto the casting road and I was like am I gonna cry um <laughs> so it seems like the end of you know like uh, like another te just enjoy it and I promise like you'll be sitting here and you'll be like I should you know I should have I should have and and it's not that I didn't enjoy it I did and I you know met my husband here and all all the things but I think just in the moment I was so uh, casting and I'm in the library uh, and now I'm like me and Andy we're like this is the library we spend so much time here so enjoy it um exactly that I'd say live in the moment, it's so cliche, um, but it's true. Don't rush your time here. Um, uh, looking, I've, it's been four years this May since I've graduated. I've been working full time every single day. I'm like, I wish I could just like not <laughs> <laughs> again uh, and have that much responsibility. And the other thing too is it's not that hard. Life's not that hard. Um, you know, you might face uh, struggles here, but you're gonna face a lot more adversities um, throughout your life. So just always try to stay positive and keep your head up. Um, and yeah, remember life's not, not that serious either. <laughs> this was the question I didn't know how to answer. So um, there's a lot of things I think I would tell myself. Um, I think that the main thing I would tell you all is that it's okay to be you. I think you said it earlier, it's okay to be you. I felt like when I was sitting there and saw women up here talking, how am I ever going to aspire to be them? What do I need to do to get there? Oh my gosh, I only have X amount of years to do it. But it, that, I think, made me in this mode of I just need to do this, 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 and not enjoy the journey of life. And it's really easy for me to say now because I'm sitting up here, but if I could give that advice to you, I think it's just be true to yourself, right? This is my theme. Be true to yourself. Trust yourself. Trust that you're going to know what the right thing is for yourself and just take your time and enjoy life. Mine's a little on the sappier side too, but just really cherishing the time that you have with your friends right next door. Um, you're not going to have your best friend down the hall from you forever. Um, so just really try to spend as much quality time as you can with your people before you graduate go to that cab event, go to that RA event, just spend time together and enjoy your time on campus. So thank you again to our panelists for being here. Your insights and willingness to share with us here will be so valuable as we embark on the next stages of our academic and professional careers. Our panelists will be heading over to the dining hall and would love for you to join them to network or ask a question you can have the opportunity to ask here. If you do not have a meal plan and would like to come, please see Deja and she will give you a dinner ticket for free. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>